Hi everyone, I'm Karina Pierce, Network Events Manager for Plant Powered Metro New York, and it's my honor today to welcome you to our ongoing monthly series, Cooking with Chef Carol, presented by Plant Powered Metro New York. Plant Powered Metro empowers people to find better health and to overcome chronic disease through a whole food, plant-based approach to nutrition. Together with a wide network of grassroots leaders, organizers, and educators, we raise awareness about the dramatic health benefits of whole food plant-based nutrition. With a food as medicine approach, we offer education, build supportive communities that empower people to make lifestyle change and organize and lead projects that spark changes to food culture and policy. While you're joining, please let us know where you're joining from in the chat box. I have a couple of announcements before we get Chef Carol on. We have a District Saigon dinner in Astoria that is somewhat closed, but there may be a seat left if you're interested. That's in Astoria, Queens, New York. If you're interested, please check the calendar on our website, ppmny.org. Again, we are so happy to see you. Welcome, Carol. And we're so happy you're joining us today. Oh, thank so you so much. I should say thank you for joining us today, Farina. Thank, I really appreciate you hosting. And um, we're, I'm very excited about today. I, I realize that I always, always, always talk so much about beans and greens. And it's summertime. And I'm thrilled to be, you know, uh, starting to eat a lot of fruit. Um, we're, I live in New Mexico now, I'm not in New York, and I feel like we're, our seasons are a little, I'm a little behind uh, the East or maybe West Coast, but we're just starting to get all of our stone fruits. And of course, the blueberries and the raspberries and the blackberries are probably coming for me from California at the moment. But I'm very excited because we're gonna make two delicious salads that are not my own, but that's okay. They're out of forks over knives, a uh, magazine from last year. I'm sure they're on the website by now because they hold back. They put things in the magazine first and then they eventually post things. Um, when I was writing up one of these recipes, the power berry quinoa and kale salad, um, somehow uh, a wine got left in from last, last recipes and it said red, red cabbage. So if you have these recipes in your hand, please note there's no red cabbage in the power berry quinoa and kale salad. We're going to make a watermelon salsa, which I super love. And then we're going to also make a plum and spinach salad um, where I'm substituting arugula for the spinach because I love spinach cooked, but I'm not a I'm not a spinach person when it's in salads. So let's get started. And um, Karina, you feel comfortable to ask questions anytime you want. Okay. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. I do want to remind people that if they have questions, to so please put them in the chat box. Uh, we'll try to answer them as we go, and then Carol will definitely have some time at the end. And as you're enjoying the presentation, feel free to like us on Facebook or YouTube or even LinkedIn. And uh, a big welcome again to everyone who's joining us. Sometimes Thanks. we ask people to put their name in the chat and even where they're from because, you know, I've left New York uh, over almost two years ago now, and we're since we've been on Zoom for three years, we've been getting people from all over the world. So I always like just knowing where people are coming from. And then there's also people that watch the replay. So the first thing that we need to do today is I want to cook and cut almost everything and make everything I've not prepped barely anything. Everything is here in front of me, but I've not really prepped things. So we want to cook the quinoa, and that takes a good 15 minutes. So what I have in this jar, and I don't know if you can really see it on camera, but the salad calls for a tri-color quinoa. And Bob's Red Mill, I know for certain, makes tri-color quinoa, meaning that you get the white and the red and the and the black or the brown. Um, there are and do they taste different each color quinoa? Just slightly. Just slightly. And I'm a fan of the red and the black quinoa. Um, I love it in my oatmeal in the mornings. But 
I couldn't find a bag of the mixed tricolored. So I actually have all three here. I have the beige and I put it in a jar and I kind of layered it in. It reminded me of when we used to make these sand jars when I was a kid and you would layer different colors sand in the jar and maybe then put a cactus or something. But anyway, I thought this was so beautiful. So I'm just gonna shake this up as we talk. And now we have the tricolor. We have three colors and this is one cup, okay? So I did a third and a third and a third of each cup. Does it matter if you have colored quinoa? No, if you just have the beige quinoa, then that's fine too. You don't worry about having the tricolor. Um, and I wanna make sure that all of you know, maybe you know, maybe you don't know, I'm not sure, but quinoa always needs to be rinsed in a fine mesh strainer, like a, a fine mesh strainer like this, okay? This is just a small half cup one, so I'm gonna have to rinse two times. But the reason I love this one is when I turn it upside down, it all goes right into the pot where the other colander, the mesh strainer, I have it, it would end up all over the counter. So um, the reason that you want to wash the, the quinoa and rinse it thoroughly is the reason is because it has um on its little seeds um wait a second let me just get this washed and then come back and talk to you and let this drain for one second while i'm talking to you oh it's so beautiful already i'm just gonna let it drain while i'm here talking to you um there's a simple pro it, it has a there's a, a not a chemical but a coating it's a coating on each seed and that coating is called saponin saponin and it gives the each coating of this little of the seed that has this saponin on it makes it taste very bitter and sometimes soapy so when someone tells me they don't like quinoa i immediately say you didn't rinse it because quinoa has a really wonderful nutty taste and makes the house actually smell really delicious and and look at all that water that came off there and it has a really delicious flavor, but the, the thing is if you don't rinse it, then you are kind of in trouble. <laughs> um, and most packaged uh, quinoa that you get, I buy mine in the bulk section, so I definitely wash it, but most if you buy it in a package, it will say often on the outside, pre-rinsed. But when I buy it in a package, I usually rinse it anyway. I just, it's just a habit of mine and like i said most of the time i buy it in the bulk section so the proportion i have the one cup of quinoa and we're gonna it's it's like rice okay so one cup and then you get two cups of water and then you have to put a lid on it when i move to the mountains here and we're very high altitude seven thousand feet um i noticed that the quinoa was taking a little longer to cook and I, so i'm very conscientious of that now i've gotten used to cooking quinoa i don't have that problem with rice but you know when you're at a high altitude you have to there, there are whole cookbooks uh that talk about how to cook when you're in high altitude i'm always in denial of all of that i don't think about it and just when I have a problem, then I have to make an adjustment. So the quinoa is now on the stove. It's going to take about 15 minutes. It's like rice. You don't want to peek in. You kind of just want to let it cook. So we're going to remember that that's back there, okay? So the very first thing I think that we're going to do is we're going to make the watermelon salsa. And that is going to be a fun thing to do. A couple years ago, I showed you how to make watermelon gazpacho. And the reason we're talking about fruit, and I realized one demo on fruit is not going to be enough because I got so excited that I had to call my friend and say, I have endless things to make and I'm not quite sure where to focus on because should we make scones? Should we make fruit smoothies? And it was really hard for me to like close in and narrow in on just what are we going to make, right? But I thought it's so nice to eat salads in the summertime. And it's so wonderful to combine the greens with the fruit that I thought that's where we would start. But of course, we're going to start with a watermelon. Now, this is a small watermelon. <laughs> and as you can see, I've already started to peel it. And this is one of those 
small ones that are like this big, smaller than my head. Um, I like this kind. I think I used to buy this kind when I lived in New York because bringing home a watermelon with the rest of the groceries meant I better have, you know, a small one, or I had to go to the store and just carry the watermelon home because it was so big and I was walking home with all my groceries. Well, now I have a car, but I still really very much want to buy the little watermelons. Um, and I practically could eat this all by myself. So the way that you cut a melon, just in case you don't know, it's just like any kind of melon, right? This one is seedless, so there are no black seeds um, in it. And you cut off the top and the bottom, you know, like here and here. And I've already started going around. And then I'm gonna get a bowl. This is gonna be my composting bowl. And I'm just gonna take my knife and I'm just gonna go slowly around the curves and peel it off. And I like just making these a little bit smaller because in my compost, you want I want it all to kind of disintegrate faster. So I always kind of cut things down a little bit. And so I'm just cutting these and you go all the way around like this. Now, if you really, really need to have curvy edges for some reason, you're making some display, you can take a peeler and go around and get off the other little pieces. But today we don't need to be so careful about the way we're doing it. And I'm just going to show you that is our watermelon. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And that's going to go over there. And of course, a lot of water is going to come off on this cutting board, which kind of drives me a little bit crazy. And let me now get a bowl. So we're going to mix this. And I'm just going to put this bowl right here. And we're going to slice and cut this. So I want small dice. So I'm going to slice this and you're going to see how I'm going to slice it. So I'm going to make a couple slices that are about a quarter inch thickness, okay? Quarter inch. And you can see where those black seeds normally would be. And we're going to need three cups. And like I said, today I haven't prepped. Sometimes I like doing every single step right in front of you. So you can see actually how easy things are. So I'm cutting, I cut quarter inch thickness and then I make quarter and now I'm all the lines that I made in one direction. Now I'm gonna make small dice and I'm gonna make it like small dice. And I'm gonna end up with a bunch of little cubes. And let's get this one here. Now the problem with watermelon is it does have a lot of water in it. And it is one of the sweetest fruits. Uh, the two sweetest fruits are pineapple and watermelon, which maybe are my reasons I love both of them so very much. So let's get a measuring cup and we're gonna measure three cups. Now, this is a, all these recipes today. Um, I wrote out the watermelon recipe for how I make it, but it doesn't have to be exact, okay? I really want you to understand that it's just a list of ingredients and something to follow, but it doesn't have to be exact. So here's your one cup, okay? Now, if we wanted to do four cups, it would be fine, but the other day I made this salad, I made the salsa, I mean, and I ate it all by myself in practically one sitting. Maybe I could say it was one afternoon, but it was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot and I said, oh gosh, I better be careful. I'm eating too much watermelon. So I'm just cutting these again and here's our one and here's our two. And I think we just need, and we want, our goal here is three, okay? So, I'm also going to show you one other little thing that I and this kind of a little surprise element. But let's get this all measured, and then I'm going to drain a little bit of my cutting board here because the water is starting to like go all over the place, and that's going to make me a little nutty. Um, again, Carol, that, that Carol, that looks fantastic. Already, and, uh, it looks fantastic. It does. Oh the colors, God. the colors oh, are so incredible. Yummy. The you thing made, is. When you're making watermelon, it's hard not to put one piece in your mouth and a few pieces in the cup. I mean, literally, it's so delicious. And when it's hot outside, there's nothing more satisfying than watermelon. Okay, so there's a lot of water here, but I want to show you, I have this amount left over. And remember, I just showed you that I cut it a quarter inch thick. I'm going to cut it like a half inch thick now, about a half inch. Um, it's almost two big slices, okay? And I just want to show you one thing because 
I'm going to miss all of you on July 4th, the holiday. <laughs> and if you have making watermelon, some people make big watermelon uh, salads, you know, like balls and making balls. But if you have some skewers, they usually come in a bag like this. Mine still stay Zabar's on the outside. So I love that I have a piece of New York here in my cabinet still. And I'm just going to put a few blueberries on this um, skewer. Just, this is, again, not a recipe, but I just want to show you what you could do with the leftover. So here's some blueberries, right? And I have a collection. I don't know where it is. But I have a whole box of um, stars, okay, star cutters. And I chose a rather small one. And all I'm going to do is carefully cut stars, right? Here they are, stars. And I'm going to cut a few of them. I'm going to just cut a bunch of them, actually. And... The rest of the, I only got six here. You, if I were more careful, maybe if I put things closer together. But look, you could make a really fun, really, really fun, maybe one blueberry here, red, a little red and blue uh, dessert, right? Look at how great that is, right? And maybe another blueberry. And then you make a plate full of these, and I think everybody will run towards these. Because, yeah, you could add pineapple, you could add anything you want, but look at that. Isn't that pretty? So that's what you can do with your leftover watermelon. But we're going to go back now, and I'm going to carefully just set this down on that plate there. And, of course, I still have a few stars. And look, I have this leftover, um, and we're just going to carefully, I don't know, we're going to just put the stars here for now. Okay, and then all the leftover um, watermelon is just going to go in a little bowl, and that will be snacked on, right? That will just get snacked on for later, and that was my little fun thing for July 4th, and it is a fun thing. When you've got a bunch made, it's a, it's a really fun thing. So back now, so we're going to get rid of all this water on this cutting board so that it doesn't go everywhere and it drives me crazy. And the next thing that goes into this, so we get to mix all this pretty much at one time. You don't have to, you just kind of keep layering and putting things in the bowl. And let me get my knife back here, okay? Now, let's look at the recipe so I don't forget anything, but I pretty much know it by heart. So we need a third of a cup of red onions, and I cut a bunch of red onions. Um, and so we need exactly a third of a cup. This is a one-fourth of a cup. I'm just going to put some red onions. I cut more than I needed. It's okay. That's going to go into there. Easy, easy enough. Okay, let's just put that back. And then the next item is one clove of garlic, which I totally forgot to get. But I have it here. And um, these are really nice local garlic that I get. You know, I have garlic growing in the yard, Karina, and I planted it in November. You put the garlic cloves in the ground, and there, I've just cut the garlic scapes just last week. And I think by the beginning of July, I will be able to um, be pulling out the garlic heads from the ground. So it's That's a really great. long process to get garlic. Yeah, it is. It's very complicated, right? It, I well, mean, it's pretty really cool that it. it's pretty cool that you can grow it yourself and that it stays underground the whole winter long. And what I super love is that it's going to be ready in the summer, do you know? <laughs> and then I'm going to have lots of garlic cloves. But it certainly makes me look at the garlic different when I buy it in the store all the time. I'm like, oh, this head of garlic had to grow underneath the ground for many, 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 many months. And it makes me just appreciate when you do it yourself and where it comes from. Um, I can't grow enough garlic here to keep me in garlic heaven. But uh, anyway, that's the situation. I'm very excited when I pull up the heads of garlic. Um, the next thing that we need is a jalapeno. Now, some of you might be timid on the hotness and things. Uh, I like putting a serrano chili in because it's a little bit hotter, but I have a jalapeno here. And jalapenos come in all different sizes. Sometimes they're gigantic, sometimes they're little. So you have to be the judge 
of how much you're putting in. So I go around and I kind of go all around the seeds. And then you, this is what is the hot part. And you want to make sure that you're not touching the seeds and then touching your lips or your eyes. And we've spoken about this so many times, but I'm just gonna show you that what I end up doing is just going around, around, around and taking off all the green, all the, and then leaving the seeds on their stem still. Like they're like that, right? But there's a bunch of them on my, on my um, counter here. Just gonna put those into the compost. And I have almost a whole jalapeno here. I'm gonna use like three, well, we'll just cut it all up with the garlic. You know, and Carol, Carol, sometimes when I cut up more than I need, I throw it in the freezer. Is that something that you do? Um, you know what? I think that's a great idea, Karina. And and but I go through it, you know, I didn't come here for to New Mexico for nothing. I <laughs> I, I love hot food so much that I feel like I'm in, sometimes I go to my drawer in the pen, in the refrigerator and I'm like, oh my God, there's no jalapenos in there, you know? And I'm the person that's growing jalapenos too and I like pickling them. So I always feel like if they're in the jar in the, in the refrigerator pickled, at least I have some, you know? So that's I never had that problem, true. but I think it's a great idea to put them in the freezer. And maybe this is a good time to put the, the link up to the recipes in case anyone uh, didn't receive them on an invitation through our, our website. Yes, that's a great idea. Only if you only receive them in your email box, if you end up going to plant, if you go to Plant Power Metro New York and you sign up ahead of time. But we have a lot of people that don't sign up, that just come on. Okay, so this is, I've now chopped the garlic and the jalapeno. I like doing it together. I really do. And am I going to use all of this? I actually am because I just, again, I just mentioned that I'm a person that likes things hot. But if you're a timid person, um, you can skip it if you really need to. Or just use a little bit. You be the judge of that. You can always, it's safer to add a little bit and then more later on, right? Because every jalapeno is a little different. Some are very, very, very hot. Some are not very, very hot. So this is what I have going so far. Onions, jalapeno, and watermelon. And the next thing is we need some fresh herbs, right? Because that's what we're going to, I talk a lot about that, that we're not using any salt or sugar or oil. And a classic in any kind of salsa is always putting the salt. So we have to bring up the flavor in other creative ways. So one of our creative ways is going to be using a bunch of mint. And I suggested that you just do the same amount of mint as you do cilantro. That's really up to you, okay? If you don't have any mint, then just use a lot of cilantro. And I have cilantro and parsley here. I always have both things. I'm just, instead of pulling it off, I think I'm going to just cut it off. Although I like to have the stem sometimes. The stem, you can use the stem part if you've cleaned it. I for certain use the stems of the cilantro. Okay, I don't think that's quite enough cilantro, but let's, oh my God, does it smell like heaven? If we had only a way for you, everybody to smell right from here, it'd be so awesome. But it does smell good. And I suggested one third cup, one third cup. Uh, if you're following the recipe that I made, you know, when I wrote it out. But it's just salsa and you can kind of make it up as you go. Um, I have a list that I put as alternatives, like if you didn't want to put mint and you didn't want to, you could add basil because basil and watermelon are like a happy marriage. So that's a substitute that you could make instead of putting mint. You could put fresh basil. But I think the combination of having two kinds of fresh herbs, I think will be lovely. So we're just gonna put that now inside, okay? We're getting close to having everything. And then we need zest and juice of one lime. Now, I like to zest all the citrus because again, we're not using any salt and we have to have a way of bringing up the flavor. So here is, I have a bunch of lime juice. I always have lime juice in the fridge or lemon juice. And 
Um, this is a wash line, and I have two different kinds of zesters. One is a microplane, which is a great tool to have. Um, and then this is a hand zester. And what does a hand zester mean? It means that when I peel this, it comes off in, in kind of curly strips. When you use the microplane, which we'll use later, I'm sure, and you've seen me use it before, when you use the microplane, it grates it right away for you, okay? This is pretty, like if you wanted to plop on top as a decoration because it's all really curly, but it's not chopped up yet. So it is nice to have both tools. For years and years and years, I only owned this one. Um, and then eventually I did get a microplane. Let's just put that back. And the microplane is really good and we'll use that eventually. But let's just chop this zest up. Again, we're building flavor here with fresh herbs and citrus zest and then citrus juice. Okay, now when you serve this watermelon salad, you're going to want to serve it right away because what's happening at the bottom, just like tomatoes, is that it's releasing a lot of liquid. So you wouldn't want to make this too far ahead of time. And if you did make it far ahead of time, or you could strain out the liquid and then put it in the bowl and then bring it to the, whatever party you're going to. If you're, I'm assuming you're going to a party. If you're like, you're not going to be like me the other day, making your own chips and then making a whole bowl of salsa and just consuming it all by myself. I couldn't believe I did it. I couldn't believe it. But I Excuse did. me. Excuse me, Carol. Um, yes. We have a really, really good question about okay. cilantro. If someone doesn't like cilantro or if someone in their family or friend group yes. does not like it, what would you yes. suggest? Um, I just suggest you use the mint. <laughs> There's no replacement for cilantro. I, I, know a, I, pe I know people that don't love red onions and I know people that don't like cilantro. So this would send a red flag up for many people, right? <laughs> so it's for the red onions, I always think of replacing it with scallions. They're a little milder, but there is no cilantro replacement. It has a, and lots of people have allergies or, you know, it's, it's a common thing. So just don't use it. And you could put parsley, but I don't even think that. I would stick to the mint and then put some basil. And then you have some nice fresh herbs. I wouldn't even try to substitute parsley for cilantro. It's just not a replacement. Does that sound good? I hope that answers the question. It, it sounds great. And I, I've done a lot with uh, in the summer with mint and watermelon. And as Carol mentioned, that basil and watermelon are a happy marriage. Mint and watermelon definitely are a contender for a happy yes. marriage. So, great. so now I'm going to, I have all these lines here. We're going to just, I'm going to put like two tablespoons, I think maybe two uh, usually in a juicy, juicy lemon or lime, you get about three to four tablespoons. I'll put four, three, three tablespoons, and we'll check to see if it's good. Now, I just want to tell you that when I mix this up, this is really going to be done, okay? You could just absolutely stop here and say, I've made a delicious wonderful, flavorful, cooling watermelon salsa that is del good with chips and you, or pita chips or just tortilla chips. And you can get baked tortilla chips in the store. Um, I don't know if you can get no salt ones. What I do is I make my own tortillas and then I cut them up into all these little triangles and I'll show you that. Um, Today, I cut, made tortillas, and what I do is I, I, I make the tortillas, and then I cut them into little triangles. I squeeze a little lemon juice, and then I put a little chili powder or chipotle on, and I make sure they're all spread out, and I put them in a 400, uh, like a 350 degree oven, not too hot, and I make a bunch of chips, and then they're baked and then they have no salt on them, and I know exactly where they come from. But there are a lot of good chips on the market, a lot of good baked chips, but just watch out for the, you know, how much oil or salt, or if any, maybe you can, I don't know, maybe you know if they're chips. I don't buy so many of that kind of thing, but Karina, have you ever bought tortilla 
baked chips out at the store? <laughs> You know, I, the best way to do it is what you're doing right there. Yeah, the 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 baked ones. Sometimes they have some other ingredients, and this is just so. You have clean. to be super yeah. careful. You just have to be super careful. Now, I want to do one more thing with this salsa, and I write it in my alternative parts. It says so. Ideas, just so you know, that I wrote down. You can use balsamic vinegar instead of lime juice. Balsamic is amazing with watermelon. You can chop the scallions instead of the onion, the red onions, if you want a milder taste. You can also, one of my favorite things is using chipotle. And you're gonna laugh at me because I keep this in this bag and it says chipotle. And the reason I keep it in the bag and it never gets to a jar is that this chipotle came from a place called Chamayo, which is on the way to Santa Fe for me. And they have the yummiest, yummiest chili powders and all sorts of kinds of chipotle. And I just keeping it in the bag reminds me of that place and then I don't put it into a jar. And also when I first brought it home and it was literally in my pantry, the entire kitchen, I could smell it. So when I open it, it's just, it's like heaven to me. <laughs> And I like putting a little bit of sprinkling of this chipotle. You could use anything you want. Chili powder is a really good thing for sprinkling. Again, because we're not using salt. But what I like also doing, and I write this in the notes, is you can add peeled diced cucumber. That would be delicious. You could use diced pineapple. And you could even dice and cut up a tomato and tomato and watermelon go very, very well together. So these are all the ideas that I could come up with um, that make it just much more interesting. And oh my God, the chipotle is almost gonna make me sneeze. Achoo! 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 Oh my goodness. Achoo! It's worth that sneeze. It gets everything. It goes right into up oh, my sinuses. I love it. These are these little teeny mini avocados. I live by myself and I love these little teeny avocados. I don't buy the large ones anymore because they're always spoiling in my fridge. So I try not to eat too many. Um, it's a good fat for you, avocados, but if you are always conscious and needing to watch your weight, then you don't want to load up on the avocado. So I try to buy the little ones so that one, they're not spoiling and two, they're, um, I'm just eating just the right amount. So I'm small dicing this right here. Again, just small dicing and it's going to go right into the watermelon salad and it makes it, um, what does it do for the salad? I love it because you taste the wet, crunchy, sweet, and then suddenly your tongue is on um, a really, I don't know, slippery, smooth piece of avocado, and somehow the combination is really delicious. So this one avocado is not a list in the ingredients, but it is definitely a part of the list where I'm saying you could swap things out. Okay, and I have a pineapple behind me and if I didn't have this avocado, I would definitely put pineapple. So now we're just gonna give it a little good, good mixing to break apart that avocado and you can see how delicious it looks. I, I am going to a party afterwards tonight and this I think I'm gonna bring with me actually because this will be a hit. Everyone will say, what did you bring? And I'll say salsa and they're like, that's salsa? Mmm, delish, 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 delish. So it's going right here. Let's see. One needs to do some reorganizing for one moment. Um, and I'm just gonna, I, we're gonna plate this right away. It's just gonna sit close by while we make our salads. We're gonna look at our quinoa in a moment. But let me just get this. I think it's, I, put, I picked a bowl that almost can hold the whole thing. Almost, almost. Better for it to be really full and really beautiful. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. I don't know, Karina, can you see it really good? I can, I think we all can. 
And, you know, while you're scooping that in, it, it's not just pretty, right? All those, that beautiful fiber and pigments and vitamins and minerals oh my God. Um, are just doing a lot for your, for our body. You're bringing it all to the party. and Oh my gosh. And look at, I have my own chips, right? So I just throw those on here like that. Now I will tell you, I told you, I ate so much of this the other day. I was like, didn't know it was addicting. I understand now why they say chips are addicting. I don't really make chips very often, but I see why this kind of thing is kind of contagious. So that's why I say make your own, because when you're buying them in the store, even if they say baked on the front, they are probably have quite a bit of salt, maybe some oil. And by baking them yourself, you know, you could just get a package of organic tortillas and cut open your own triangle, make your own triangles and then put them in the oven. And this is our lovely, lovely salsa and chips, watermelon salsa. So we're going to get that so that it's put over here for now. We'll bring it back out later, but it looks delicious. Okay. And let me just rinse my cutting board. Are there any questions that anybody has, Karina? Well, I have a question, Carol. So, oh. um, so in, in your in this next recipe that you're moving to, I see that you're mixing sweet flavors with savory flavors. And oh you'll my be God! It is something that I could talk to you about for a hundred years. Um, you know, Karina, you have. I know you've been to almost all my demos, but you've been in the behind the scenes, um, watching as a, uh, like everyone else. But I talk about beans and greens like all the time that's all i talk about is beans and beans and beans and you've got to eat your greens but i realized all I when i started thinking about fruit how am i going to limit just making a very few things so today is going to be part one i really think we'll do a little bit i already have a plan for july we're making these wonderful eggplant meatballs and 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 tomato sauce but we'll probably do a little more fruit things because mixing savory with sweet is so wonderful and it's a way to get all your antioxidants your minerals your vitamins and i don't know who can eat a salad that has raspberries blueberries and 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 blackberries i mean what person couldn't eat a salad so let's uh, move on, and and um, I'm glad that you pointed out. I think we'll save the berry salad for last, and we'll make what is called a plum spinach salad with curried lentils. Now, what attracted to attracted me to this recipe was that it had curried lentils, and I love that. And the way that we cook them is so attractive to me because. I'm a chickpea fan, <laughs> uh, and and I, I don't think we've done it on the demo before, but I love cooking chickpeas and then putting a bunch of spices on them and then putting them in the oven. Um, when I worked in a restaurant, we used to deep fry them and then put a lot of spices on them, and they were served as an appetizer with cocktails. So I love doing that in the oven with the chickpeas. So when I saw this recipe, I'm like, oh, we get to dry roast the, the, the lentils. I just love that idea. And I've been eating this salad since last summer. So let's get started. And I'm going to put the burner on so that you see what we're going to do. Um, and let me get, so we need to start out with a two thirds of a cup, which is about four ounces, um, give or take or so, uh, of, of yellow lentils. And they're, they're not the orange ones, they're not the green ones, they're the yellow ones. And they're often called yellow split lentils, okay? They're not moon doll, they're yellow lentils. Very e accessible to almost everyone, okay? And when you, um, if you want them to cook fast, you can soak them overnight. They're just like a bean. You can just soak them because soaking them will speed it up. Now, I did cook mine ahead of time um, because I wanted to, just show you the dry roasting part. Now, while we're talking about that, I immediately want to make sure what's happening. I'm going to peek at my quinoa here, which is really almost done. Peeking is not so good, but I've lost track of the time. So here is the cooked yellow lentils. This is in the same mesh kind of strainer that I would have used to wash the quinoa. But now I've drained the cooked lentils 
And what we need to do is in a saucepan, in a skillet that's heating up, we're going to add these drained um, lentils. They're going right here in the pot. Knock, knock. Done. Okay. And we are going to add two teaspoons of um, curry powder. Okay, now there's a lot of kind of curry powder. There's mild, there's hot. This is like a mild curry powder, and I'm putting two teaspoons. Now, you might say, is it gonna stick? Well, I'm using an amazing pan called an Ozeri, but there are lots of ceramic pans on the market now that are really good. And um, if you use a non-stick pan, preferably ceramic, um, the, they will not stick at the bottom. Well, your lentils will not stick. As they dry out, they'll, if they do start to stick, you don't want to add any water or anything. You're basically dry roasting these, okay? So that's very important to note that, that if they're starting to stick, you're not going to add water. Okay, you're just going to let them stick and eventually they're going to move. But because I have a really nice pan and this little spatula here, and what I'm going to do is because I put the two teaspoons, I'm going to toss the curry and we're basically making these real, and, and you can see, I don't think you can see quite, but there's still a little moisture in these lentils because they just got drained and I'm coating all the curry powder all over now if you're like me you be, me, certainly start to get a million ideas at this point you start thinking oh i could put some chili flakes oh i could add another little spice i could put a little cinnamon if i want but let's just keep it simple we have the curry and those are going to start to cook Okay, I don't have the gas burner, that's behind me. So we're gonna watch those and make sure it's all happening. Okay, and then what we need to do is, this recipe has plums in it, okay? Stone fruits. These happen to be called pluots. Um, pluots are, how do I describe a pluot? A pluot, <laughs> there's so many kinds of pluots. There's it is almost 75% plum and 25% apricot. It's like a hybrid, right? They started making pluots in the 80s. And there's a million kind, I'm not kidding you. And I wrote down, I was in Los Angeles a few years back in the farmer's market there, and they had like rows and rows of every kind of pluot. And I wrote down, I went back and looked at an old photo this morning so that I could remember to tell you, some are called dapple dandy. Some are called dinosaur egg. They're called uh, elephant heart. Some are called honey sherbet. There's all sorts of names for these pluots. So I don't, we have beautiful plums here in New Mexico and where I live, but they don't come to us until August. So we're only here in late June. So the pluots is what I get. So again, this recipe, and I'm going to try to move things over just a little bit so we actually have some room to build this salad. I'm going to just move all of these things, and we're going to get a bowl like this for now, just to build the salad. Now, the key part of this salad is spinach and plums. And I mentioned already to you that I'm not a spinach fan, a raw spinach fan. When it's mixed with lots of other greens, sure. But to eat just regular spinach, I love cooked spinach. So I'm substituting this with um, baby arugula. Well, no, just, it's not even baby. It's just arugula. So what I'm going to do is I have a lot over here. It's been sitting out for all, almost all morning today. And I realized that I should cut it up just a little. Okay, and we're, the recipe has a real, you know, proportions and things, but I don't want to end up making too much of this salad. Let's just use up all of this arugula, okay? Arugula is so beautiful. I'm growing it for the first time in my yard, along with a bunch of other mixed greens, and it's all coming up. And so I'm very excited if I'm going to have my fresh lettuce for my first time in the yard. So we're just cutting this. So this is going to be the arugula, a whole big gigantic bowl. And then 
let's get rid of this here. And I can hear that we need, I'm listening, right? So, we, and I'm just gonna stir this. Now, how are we gonna know when these are done? I would say they need cooking for like five or 10 minutes, really slow, and they're gonna be dried out. You're not gonna see any moisture, and you can hear them, they're sizzling, actually. So, I haven't really cut open very many plums this season, and let's just see what this, ah, this one's beautiful. This one, I think, is called a mod, mod, modeled. Modeled? I wrote it down. It's called modeled. Modeled pluo. It's beautiful. So we're going to slice a bunch of plums that are going to go on the salad. But the really awesome part about this salad is we're going to make a dressing with the plums. And I love that part. Now, all of you know when you're cutting this fruit, there's always like a little divot. That's where you want to cut. That's the, the direction. You don't want to go opposite of that divot. You actually want to follow that little indentation. And then you usually give it a twist. And sometimes the twist, the, the seed comes right out. And other times not. Um, sometimes the, the seed is a clingy seed. Now, I haven't even tasted these. Um, oh my God. They're so yummy. I'm throwing them all over the salad, and I haven't even tasted them, but now I have. And I can see that this pit is not gonna work itself out. So I have to kind of go around it. So I will. I'll, and then the rest of this is just gonna go into the compost bucket. Okay, now again, we have to remember that we've got the quinoa on. And these are stunning plums, stunning. Just look at the color, I mean, I don't know, I have to show it to you like this because they're dark at the top and light. And Now, the recipe gives you proportions if you're wanting to follow it exact. But because it's just me, how much salad can I have, you know? This I could eat all by myself, so I'm just kind of making it in a mouth. And let's try the other plums. So those were two of those kind of plums. We'll save a little bit of this plum to make the dressing. And how much of the dressing we're... For the dressing, we're going to take the plums, the oranges, juice, and vinegar, and cover and blend till smooth. So what we're going to do is, hmm, I'm just looking at it right now while I'm talking to you. And it says here that we're cooking that, we're doing that. Oh, and it also says to put a little black pepper. So we better put a little black pepper on our our skillet, in our skillet here. And I, see, this nothing is sticking. And they're getting, they're starting to get toasty, a little bit brown. And again, we're looking for them to be dried out. Now, last week, I did make so many of these that I ended up snacking on them, literally snacking on them. Okay, so we're going to um, take, oh, and I have to tell you something really funny that I did today. The dressing, when we get to the dressing, I'm going to tell you about it. Um, here is just a plum, but it's not as red and wine colored, but let's taste it to see how good it is. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's a different kind of plum. Sometimes when I'm in the store, I buy a bunch of variety just to get different colors going, and you never know which one is the sweetest one. So I think that is a good proportion for the salad, for the plums. Now what we need to do is we need to make our dressing. Okay, so we're gonna, for the dressing in a blender, combine one plum, just one plum. Oops, I just dropped that, that's not good. Just a minute. We're gonna combine one plum. So that was just a little bit of a plum. Let's get really one whole plum. So we get that into the, and we'll use, I don't have any more of the really, oh, I do have beautiful red ones. Oh my God, it's like a surprise, you know? I bought a bunch in the store and I, I kind of didn't look at all the, you know, I bought like three kinds. So this is a real kind of surprise. So here's a beautiful red plum. But I have to tell you, I made the dressing out of this kind of plum at the beginning of the week and it turned pink. So now we have a really pink one. So now we know the red dressing is gonna be for sure, for sure. So let's look at the quinoa. I'm sure the quinoa is done. One second, I'm just gonna turn it off. Okay, it is done. I'm going to turn that off. 
and I'm going to get it off the stove. So that's done. Now will be for our next salad. So we're going to take our this right here, and we're going to take our mustard, which I have here in a jar. So let's get a spatula. I don't know why I didn't pull a spatula. So we're going to get one tea. We have one plum. We have one teaspoon of mustard. I, th I don't know why I put it in this jar. I thought I was going to hand mix it for some reason. I don't know why I did that. So one, and then we need three tablespoons of white wine vinegar. So three tablespoons, and I'm going to get that right here. Three tablespoons. Now one and two and three. Hmm, that smells good too. That is just organic white wine vinegar. It's good to have white and red. And sometimes in the pantry I have regular balsamic and white balsamic. Sometimes it's just good to have a lot of vinegars. I don't buy them all at one time because it gets too expensive. But it's kind of like a collection. So I'm going to taste one of these. Mmm. They're still a little moist and I want them to be toasty. Okay. And so we're going to mix the dressing, plums or uh, vinegar, mustard. Now, this is the story I have to tell you. Here is some orange zest. I peeled an orange today in a juiced an orange. I only had one orange, and we need a third of a cup of, of orange juice. Is it a third of a cup? Yes, a third of a cup. And I squeezed it by hand, and you know what I did? I put the, I put the juicer right into the sink, and as I was washing, I'm like, oh, there goes the juice down the drain. I couldn't believe I did that. I have the zest, but I don't have the juice, and we need one-third cup juice. So what is one to do? I have no oranges. I have lots of limes. I have lots of lemons. But I thought, you know what? Maybe a good substitute for something like an orange juice, something that's kind of sweet, is apple cider. So it's something that I have in the fridge. <laughs> I actually really have it in the freezer all the time, some apple juice concentrate. So I'm going to put a little water in here, just a little bit, and I'm gonna get the, just one second here. I'm gonna get this, and I'm just going to mix this, and I'm literally making a substitution right in front of you. Now, definitely try to use the orange juice if you can, because that's what is how the recipe was written. But I'm making a substitute, and I hope it's a good one. We don't really know. Maybe it's a better idea to use lemon or lime. I'm not sure. What would you do, uh, Karina? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I've, I've made that same. I've, I've done that as well, Chef Carol. So it's a, your, your heart kind of drops when it happens. But I, I was thinking apple cider. I, I would even go in with a little bit of water. Um, uh -huh. I think there's so much flavor in there already that you could just use that same amount of water. But orange juice would be best. It would be, the orange juice is ideal. And I almost feel like still putting in the orange zest, even though we have an apple flavor. I'll just put it in because that was going to be my idea was to sprinkle a little orange zest on the top. Yeah, but, um, and, then you, and you'll have the sweetness from the apple juice and you'll have the, the flavor. And of the I orange. have the amazing plum. And I have the amazing... Um, mustard. So I have all the right flavors, right? You need for a dressing, you need a little sweetness, you need a little bit of tang, a little which, and a little bit of vinegar, and the tang is coming from the mustard. And then we're going to, this is my little teeny Nutribullet part, and we're just going to put this here, and I'm just going to blend it up, okay? It's a really nice dressing. You'll see in one second, I'm just going to blend it over here. Just takes a second, usually. Just put this here. Sometimes my neutral bullet acts up. Just once. Oh, you know, it doesn't work if you don't plug it in. That is a real thing. dressing is even when I didn't make it with the very pink pink pl uh, plums I I ended up with this same color beautiful dressing and it's awesome to have serve a dressing that like that looks like that 
I think. And we're gonna taste it to make sure that it's super delicious. And it, if it needs something, we could add a little pepper. I'm just gonna taste it with a spoon here. And it's perfect. It's okay, I saved it from the orange juice. The apple juice concentrate was just fine. What I do with all the dressings that I make, I put them in this little jar. I think I've told this story many, 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 many times. When I started uh, not eating olive oil and not eating you know, olive oil and lemon on a salad, I had to have, uh, Wendy made a raspberry dressing that I loved. And I had to always be sure that I had the dressing in the refrigerator, always. Otherwise, if I didn't, I would want to pour the olive oil on. So to this day now, I don't have the olive oil at all in the house, but I do have the um, dressing, all an A dressing in the refrigerator at all times. So that way when I'm ready to make a salad, it's just all there for me and I don't have to panic like, what am I gonna do? Um, there are fast recipes, orange juice and some vinegar, there, that's a recipe. There's so many fast ways, but it's just nice, this makes me feel secure to have it in the fridge. So now we're just gonna finish, and I have a little, I just wanna, my cutting board has all the plums on it, and all I wanna do is some chop a few little things, and this salad is done. Okay, so we're almost getting there. We almost have a done salad. Now you can imagine that if you have all this dressing and you're not using it all at one time, that tomorrow, when you, if you go to make the salad for yourself or to bring to work or to make it for company, that you just have to put all the ingredients together and the dressing's ready, right? So salad is fast. And it's also a great thing to have in the summer. I find when it's really, really hot, there's nothing more refreshing than having salad and greens and eating it with the fruit and it's just it's just refreshing and you need refreshing when it's hot so we need some scallions okay and i know people that don't like them these are washed scallions and i'm just gonna cut those off there and sometimes what i do i know you can't see my cutting board at the moment let's just move this Sometimes what I do when I know I'm chopping them, I'll actually, I'm not gonna use. Where's the other knife? Where's the other knife? This is better. Um, sometimes what I do is I split them down the middle so that they're already almost chopped, right? So I'm gonna cut it down the middle and down the middle again. With the point, I'm cutting it down the middle. And that way they're already um, if you put them in ice water now, and you put, that's when they become curls. I don't know if anybody's ever seen scallion curls, but we do that a lot to, in, when we're decorating things. <laughs> and I'm just chopping the scallion. This is something that you want to use the whole scallion. You don't want to just use the, the white part. You can use every bit of the scallion, all the way up to the top. I'm going to cut the green. Now, I have two friends that don't like onions at all, raw onions, and I can't tell you, sometimes I sneak in the scallions because I just, it's hard not to use onions when you want to have onions. Sometimes what I do is I watch them pick them out, like literally pick them out of the salad. And I just think, you know what, if there's a bunch of people that are eating the salad with them and they don't like them, well, then they can pick them out. That's just what happens. <laughs> Okay, so that's probably a good amount of scallions. And then we need to have the other things that go into this salad are some fresh parsley. Here, let's just do it all at one time, all the chopping that we're going to do. Okay, we need some fresh parsley. Again, we're using all the fresh things that are going to just burst in flavor in your mouth, which is good. Parsley, we haven't used once today. Usually the parsley doesn't go into the compost bin, it goes into the stock bin. But I've got one really very big, this is getting all chopped up. And I do like mixing it all together on the cutting board. You could put the scallions and then the parsley, you can do that, sometimes I do that. But there's something about when it's all mixed together that I super love. Okay, so those are basically our greens. 
that are going on the salad. I'm gonna move this back close to us here. And then this salad calls for some, not some walnuts. So I have that right here. And it calls for toasted wall. I'm toasting the walnuts. I did that already. And I'm just gonna put a few out. You only want to eat one to two ounces of nuts at a, a, a day, actually. They're high in fat, but they're good for you. It is a good fat, but you don't want to eat too many. Um, I kind of say, I, sometimes I feel like I'm addicted to nuts, so I keep very little bit in the house. Even though I'm a baker, I like having all those nuts in the house, but I have to be careful because I'm the kind of person that really loves them. I grew up in a Jewish home, and we had them at the ends of our table, uh, at the couch on the, on the little end tables. But you had to crack your own. But that was kind of like a Jewish home when you grow up in a Jewish home that was like that in those days. Very popular, too. So let's just put all of this in here like this, right? Oh, my God. If you only knew how good this smells, okay? I keep talking about smell today. But look how beautiful that is. And then what we're going to do is, I, I'm not gonna put too much dressing on, why? Because I want to be careful um, about, because I'm not gonna eat this for a while, maybe in a couple of hours, right? So I have some little hands, some little salad hands, and I'm just gonna give it a good tossing, right? And that's gonna be our beautiful salad. You can make it with spinach if you want. You could make it, I've made it with arugula. I would put plums and walnuts and it's, it's gonna be so delicious. It might need a little more pepper once we're done, but it's got that beautiful pink dressing. Beautiful and it's clinging to everything and I'm just gonna taste a big, mm, 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 mm. Oh my God. And do you think I'm gonna eat all of this? I absolutely am. Let's just put that here for now. And let's get some of the beautiful plums on top. Right? And we get onto our last salad. And um, that will be our demo today of fruit. But let's just get everything. Okay. So we can't let that take over. Let's move the hands out of the way here for now. And um, I want to just give this bowl. You always have to wipe things before you're bringing it to the table. So this can sit here now for a moment, but it's going to be in the way. So let's move some of this right for now. We're going to move some of these things, even though we're getting ready to use them. Okay, so this is one beautiful salad, and I want to put the plums all on the top. Do they like to sink to the bottom? Why? Because they're heavy. But that just is what happens. Is there any questions, Karina, from anybody about this salad? Well, I'm thinking a lot about the health benefits of curry powder, right? So what a great thing to add into that for sure. And uh, someone was wondering if they could use this salad dressing on other salads during Oh, the my God. You, I have a jar of it in the fridge, and I've been eating it on everything all week long. So that's a great question. And I'm just putting a few of the lentils on. Now, I'm gonna mix it just a little, little bit more now, just a hair more. I really want the plums to sh balance with the, with the lentils, with the curry lentils, because you can imagine how the sweet taste of the plum and then the nice curry flavor of the lentil, right? And then there's the texture of the all of this. There is so many different things going on here. Layering of the beans with the fruit and then the greens. And then you've got all these different layered flavors. I'm telling you, this is a winner of a salad. And we can thank Forks Over Knives for this salad. Um, does anybody have, and then what I do with these leftover lentils, just so you know, is I just put them in a airtight container and they went right into the refrigerator and i actually snacked on them during the week um, i don't think they ever made it to a, another salad i think that i just ate them by the spoonful because they just were like eating a snack <laughs> so 
so that's, a great, that's a great idea, Carol, to have some of these things over to the side. I would love to make those curried lentils like as a little batch in the beginning of the week and a dressing or two and then maybe clean my clean my greens. And like you said, just throw it all together. It's and really fast. And mm -hmm. I have to tell you, not this salad, but the salad we're about to make. I made a bunch of it at the beginning of the week and I put just a teeny bit of dressing on it and I tossed it and then I put it in containers to take to work with me and it held up. It was like a really good salad to like hold up because I didn't overdress it and it didn't get really soggy because there was really nothing for it to, it wasn't, it wasn't soggy at all actually. So let's get to our other I'm going to get the cutting board here. I know that's in the way of the cutting board, but we're not really cutting very much for this next salad. This next salad is a real powerhouse salad, <laughs> and it is called Power Berry Quinoa and Kale Salad. And that's because berries are like a, are a superfood. Um, Elberries, strawberries, blueberries, blackberries. And sometimes people ask me, how do I wash? How do you wash these little, these little gems? And there's all sorts of ideas about putting water and a little vinegar. Some people do that, but I'm very careful. The blueberries, you can just put in a colander and, and rinse them because they're strong. But when you've got these little, the berries and especially the raspberries that are so gentle and they have all those little nooks and crannies, um, I just submerge them in water and then I swish them around and then take them out and then put them on a paper towel and let them drain. Because there are little, you know, there could be bugs, there could be dirt, there could be things. Um, and there is a proportion, if you're really wanting to know, of a three to one. So you do three parts water to one part vinegar. And you make that your water bath. And that's some people do that for their berries. I don't bother with the vinegar, but it is a way to do it. Um, so let's get this started and I'll show you how quick this salad is as well. So we're using kale and um, I am going to put the kale in. It says use three cups of baby kale. I probably have like, usually a measure. How do I measure? I don't really put it in a measuring cup. I usually say this is one. This is one cup, right? One. We So we have like two cups of baby kale. That's all the kale I really have. And I have to tell you, when I first started eating a lot of vegetables. I was a vegetarian for a long time, but I didn't eat enough greens, that's for sure. As a vegetarian, I relied on eating a lot of dairy and a lot of eggs and a lot of other cheeses and things. But when I really went all in, um, learning to really love kale was time. It took time. And the way that I learned to love it was eating baby kale because somehow the big leafy curly kale was too much texture for my mouth at the time. And I just thought, if I'm gonna learn to love this kale, so forever and ever, I bought this little baby kale that comes in plastic containers and I still buy it, but now I love kale and it's not an issue for me, but I'm just mentioning that in case for you, maybe it is. Um, you don't, you just don't know, okay? So let me get a bowl and I'm gonna get this bowl because I want this bowl. I'm just going to put these on the counter, literally. Get rid of that piece of arugula. And we're going to get all of our quinoa. Now, I don't have quite enough um, kale here. This is to use three cups, but we're not, I'm not going to use all that. And what it says here is we cut, cook the quinoa, and after we cook the quinoa, we need to toss some chia seeds in it. So now I'm gonna put one tablespoon into these chia, into the quinoa. So now we've really boosted up the protein. And you know, quinoa has some of the most protein. This is one of my favorite things to eat at breakfast. I put a little almond milk in. Sometimes I put oats, but I love quinoa and chia. So this, I'm just kind of taking this out of the, out of the pot. I'm trying to mix in the quinoa. It was only one um, mix in the chia seeds, sorry. We have, and we have this very colorful 
uh, quinoa. Again, you don't have to use the tricolor. And I'll deal with getting the rest of this out later. It's just a little sticky in there. So because I'm not making a full, full salad, I'm just going to keep this quinoa on the side. And this eventually will go into a container in the refrigerator. And I'll either eat it for breakfast or I'll make another salad or I'll do something with it. But it is really good. I talk about this often about batch cooking, right? And you want to make a lot of these kinds of things ahead of time so that when you're in the middle of your work week or whatever it is that you're doing that keeps you busy all week, you want to have these things accessible to you so you're not slaving away in the kitchen, okay? So this now, basically, we have everything we need for this salad. That's how simple it is. We have kale, we have quinoa mixed in with chias. We have washed raspberries, washed blackberries, and blueberries. The only thing we don't have is the dressing. And we also need, the recipe also calls for some toasted papitos, which are pumpkin seeds, right? So we're just going to have a few of those, and I'm going to put those on at the very end. So let's make our dressing, which is super easy and super quick, and we basically can make it in this measuring cup. I thought I was going to make it in... Hmm. This is a very simple recipe, and it doesn't even need a blender, and I like that. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to put in is two tablespoons of lime juice. Okay, and I have a measuring spoon that is exactly two tablespoons. And I have this already squeezed. It's going to, okay, so there is our two, I just see a little tiny bit of a fleck of, of onion there. There, we have two tablespoons, exactly, of lime juice. And then we're going to need two tablespoons of brown rice vinegar. Now, many of you might not have this in your pantry. Um, is it worth having? I think it is. It actually has zero calories. And what is it made out of? Water and organic brown rice in koji. Okay, so it's organic brown rice vinegar, and it's very delicious. And when I am stocking my pantry, it's one of the first vinegars that I actually go and get. So it's worth trying if you don't have it. It lasts a long time because you it's not an everyday vinegar like apple cider vinegar or balsamic, but it is something good to have. And it's nice, like I said, when you're building your vinegar pantry, you don't buy all of them at one time because they are 7 or $8 a bottle sometimes and sometimes even more money if you buy the organic. But it's nice to have them. And then we need some kind of sweetener. You could use a date if we were blending this or I had some date paste, I would just use that. But this calls for, this recipe calls for two teaspoons of maple syrup. So I'm gonna use that. And we're almost done here, just so you know. And two teaspoons of, so that's our sweetener. And then it calls for some um, black pepper. And that's our dressing. Can you believe how simple that is? So what I would do if I were you <laughs> is I'd make a bunch of this. This recipe does only makes what? Look, a, a third of a cup, right? And it's a really yummy, yummy, yummy dressing and very simple. So I would try to make maybe twice the amount and then get it in the fridge. Mm. Oh my God, it's so yummy. It's so yummy. Okay, so we're just gonna assemble this salad and I wanna make sure that I haven't forgotten anything. Okay, so it's gonna get a lot of quinoa. Again, I'm just gonna estimate here how much quinoa because I don't have a lot of kale, right? And it's nice to layer all these things, right? When you're doing this, you wanna layer the salad so that you see everything. I've chosen a big enough bowl, right? So those are the blueberries. If you want, some of these blackberries are quite large. In fact, I'm looking at them thinking, is that really going to go into somebody's mouth like that? Maybe not. So just going to give it a cut in half. Okay, just because they're they're really big. I didn't notice that after I washed them. I would have, but that's okay. It's better to do these kind of things like cutting right when you're about to eat it, right? Because they are berries, they are fragile, and you have to be careful with them. And then we're going to put some raspberries, right? 
So this is beautiful red, right? So not, and these also are big. Some of these are quite large. I almost want to like pull them apart and cut them in half, but it's okay. These are, it's okay. Um, but always, oh, don't know why they look, some of them look so big, but they look delicious. You could do strawberries too, right? Don't limit yourself. The recipe calls for three kinds of berries. If you only have two, then use two. Um, I think today, everything that we made has great substitution and alternatives. Like you could put apricots with this curry. Peaches would be fantastic with this curry. So if you don't have plums, use peaches. And this particular, you could put strawberries. It would be fantastic. Okay, so let's get rid of this big, gigantic bowl of pizza. And we've used all our berries, so let's kind of move those so that we're not all crowded. And, and then we're going to put our pepitos on the top, right? Just sprinkle them. And when you're making a salad, want, choose wisely. I often get a too small of a bowl. You know, this is my own personal salad bowl. And I want to show you how big it is. Look, it's from my elbow to pass almost to my pinky, right? I bought this bowl like two summers ago to remind myself that I needed to eat a lot of salad. So this sits out, it doesn't really fit in any cabinet. And it is a reminder for me that I must eat salad because I always think that you're one or another. You know, years ago when I was eating uh, um, savory, like, like when I ate eggs and cheese years ago, I would say, are you a sweet person or a savory person? Are you, because that would tell me, do I need to make eggs for you or do I need to make pancakes? That was how I would know what to make for somebody. But now, because I don't eat those, those items, I say, are you a greens person or are you a beans person? Which, which one are you? And I am absolutely a beans person, so I have to remind myself to eat the greens. Okay, so this is why I buy myself a gigantic bowl. Um, <laughs> um, other people are really greens people, and they don't know anything about eating beans. And they have to eat beans because that is super important fiber. So not everybody is so well balanced, and you have to train yourself to do these things. Um, I don't know if you feel that way, Karina, but that's what has happened for me. <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. And sometimes you might feel like something at a different time and something else at another time. We do have a really good question, Chef Carol. Yes. Um, regarding the curried lentils in the prior salad. Yes. Can they be baked instead of yes. toasting them in a pan? Yes. In fact, in fact, if I wasn't trying to follow the recipe because it's not my own, I followed the recipe because it's not mine. But I'm telling you, it would be super good to bake them in the oven <laughs> on a piece of parchment paper and mm -hmm. spread them out so they're flat and you could bake a bunch of them. But the good thing, the reason I really follow, the two reasons I followed the recipe, one, because it's a recipe that I'm trying to follow to show you. And two, I wanted to show you the nonstick pan. And three, when it's 95 degrees, especially in New York, you do not want to turn your oven on. It is too damn hot. So learn to make things that are cool, right? And it's going to, so this is basically almost baked, but it's dried out in the pan. But mm -hmm. if it's winter time and you're making this, then you could make it in the oven because you want the oven to be on so you're nice and toasty and warm. That's wonderful. And one more question um, regarding like making dressings thick. It seemed like you use the fruit quite often to make it a little bit thicker. Could you use like ground chia seed or is there anything? You could. You know, I make a lot of dressings with fruit, sometimes apples, sometimes mm -hmm. raspberries. Um, raisins are good sweetness, but um, you could use, I don't ever use chia seeds as a thickener. Um, I tend to use like maybe sometimes I use a few walnuts to replace oil. Sometimes I use applesauce, actually. Oh, applesauce is a really good idea in dressing. And honestly, you can use beans too, or, or pureed carrot is really good. I mean, people, I could do a whole class, and maybe if you want this, I could do a whole class just on dressings. I mean, it would be maybe boring because we make one dressing after another, after another. But 
there's an infinite amount of dressings, and I think it's really good to learn those. Um, and I'm always searching for new ones and trying new ones because it's just nice to know that you can have salad or make put dressing over green uh, white beans or green beans or just having a dressing in the refrigerator makes it so much easier to eat a meal, right? So Definitely. if you if you have a lot of things up your sleeve, a lot of creative ways of making dressing, not using oil, not using sugar, right? <laughs> All then they're really healthy for you. And you're gonna see that they everything bursts a flavor in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, and we have one, I'll say it's the last question. It could be the last one. Um, what could you re remind us the name of that ceramic pan that you oh, mentioned yes. earlier? I'll spell it for you actually. Um, it's called Ozeri O Z E R I. And so I'm gonna give this a little toss, just a little with my hands. You can see I'm I would get my little wooden handles, but I didn't. I, my little handles are in the sink, all dirty. And of course, all the berries want to go everywhere. And this is, I'm not kidding you, this is the simplest salad dressing. Mm. The, the quinoa is still warm and I actually like that. I'm not, I mean, you could chill it if you want the quinoa, if you want a really cold salad. But I actually like that it's a little bit warm. I like that very, very much. So we are ready to do a wrap up. Great. And I just want to show you before you run away, I'm going to bring back everything we've made. Um, we have these salads, we have the watermelon, the chips and the salsa. I'm probably going to move this further back. And believe it or not, we have these create, I have a little dressing left. Um, and we can't forget that I showed you how to make skewers, right? With stars and blueberries for your July 4th celebration. And you could put a raspberry. Wouldn't that be really beautiful? I just thought of that. I have these big raspberries and this could go right on the top. That's great, Chef Carol. And we definitely in the audience today had uh, a lot of salad lovers. People really seem to love the idea of using whole fruit, whether it was pears or lemons or apples or plums, as you did, um, you know, right in the dressing to blend. And we have a lot of big salad eaters, too. So they're letting us know how big their bowls are, just like yours. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I love that yeah. because sometimes I'm at work and people will, the, I work in a kitchen and they have little bowls of salad like that. And I say, I need three times that amount, please. Yeah. I'll take three portions of that, you know? So when you're getting all your vitamins, your nutrients and everything from the greens and the beans and the, and the grains and you eat, you consume a lot, right? It's, yep. it's just a fact, but it's, mm -hmm. um, it's okay to eat a lot because it's all healthy for you. <laughs> yeah. And I think the more of that good food that we eat, the more our body craves. The body says, yes, please, more of that. Oh my God. I'm so glad you said that because <laughs> when I transitioned from vegetarian to vegan and I made that transition, I would be so hungry that I, I'd be like dreaming and craving a, a green salad. And who would have ever thought that? Like that would be, normally I would used to in the old days, I would eat a piece of bread or a piece of apple pie or something like, I would just grab whatever was close by. And all my friends thought I was the most healthy person. I was, I was the vegetarian amongst us. But when I became a vegan and I started eating this way, all healthy, no sugar, no salt, no... I, these are the things I crave and they really satisfy me now. Everything you made today is so satisfying with the layering of the flavors. It just, just, you know, I think you're sending everyone off with a great way to be ready for July and any picnics. If it, they're hard, the biggest problem will be that they won't know which one to bring to the big picnic. So but they can deal with me who couldn't decide on three things just for our, t that's what we're going to have a part two. I think a little bit of next month is going to be a little more fruit because we talk so much about, we don't get to talk about fruit all the time. And this is when the universe brings us fruit, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
I mean, we have the pairs. And as I used to say when I lived in New York, my husband would ask, what's at the market in the winter? And I'd say, apples, apples, apples. <laughs> apples and more apples. But <laughs> yeah. So we, so we have to enjoy this season. Thank you so much, Chef Carol. And thank you for everyone who joined us today. I have a few more things to go through, but in case you're joining us in the future for a recording, we're happy you're here. If you're here from one of our recent Jumpstart starts, if you're a graduate or a current, current Plant Powered Metro Jumpstart uh, member, then so glad that you came. Carol can be reached at Carol with an E at the Veggie Vanguard Dot com and on Instagram at the veggie vanguard and uh, we'll also be sharing the URL for our plant-powered Metro New York kitchen app it has some of chef Carol's recipes as well as multicultural recipes from all of our community cooks and then I'll remind everyone about that district Saigon dinner it's a wonderful Vietnamese restaurant if you want to go on our website P, uh, plantpoweredmetronewyork.org or ppmny.org. There may still be a few seats available. Uh, also, there was a wonderful uh, Heart to Healthy Heart show with Dr. Barnard this past week. So catch that on our YouTube channel for a replay. It was absolutely fantastic. Our next demo with Chef Carol, as she reminded us earlier, is Sunday, July 23rd at 5 p.m. And all links to register are on our Plant Powered Metro New York website, plantpoweredmetrony.org. And also while you're there, please consider a donation to Plant Powered Metro New York so we can keep shows like this on the air for you. On behalf of the entire team, a special thanks to our producer, Jim Spellos, for his help today and always behind the scenes, making everything run smoothly. I'm Karina reminding you to fill your plate with veggies, fruits, beans, grains, nuts, and seeds for not only better health, but mental clarity and peace of mind. See you next time. It's been too fun for words. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thank Chef you, Carol. Karina. Thank you for joining us and come back to visit us. I will. Come back. Come back. Yes. Isla says hi too. She's here ready to eat too. And and thank you for coming. See you next month.